Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, I think this is a good scripture to share with you this morning. Second Deuteronomy, cha I mean, <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse, verse 4. And Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt. To Pharaoh and to all his servants and all his land, the great trials that your eyes saw, the signs and those great wonders. Uh, Moses is reminding them, you guys have seen the greatest trials, the, uh, the plagues, the nine plagues that destroyed Egypt, the parting of the Red Sea, and how God brought you out from the land of slavery of Pharaoh to the land of freedom and liberty. And you've seen all these great signs and wonders. So, see, but the problem is verse 4. But to this day, the Lord has not given you a heart to understand or eyes to see or ears to hear. <laughs> this is a problem. The heart is not responding. The heart is depraved. So the two things that we need uh, as Christians today, see, apply that today as believers in Christ. That is first. We must recall and remember the great things, the miracles, uh, the no so great miracles, nevertheless, signs and ma amazing answers to our prayers God has given to us. Remember them. Remember what the Lord has done for you. Remember what God has done for you and me. You know, we all are forgetful. So this is a crucial thing to remember, to recall. Moses reminded them what the Lord has done all this for them now the problems is this is the first thing the second thing is those things need to get to our heart now that's a tough one how do you get to our heart you see i've led you for 40 years uh verse 5 your clothes have no one out your sandals have no one off your feet you know you have not you have defeated the enemy whenever they need them food god rained down if, if, from heaven if when they need a water god opened up the rock Water will gush to feed them. All this good stuff for them. God proven again and again the Lord, our providence, our supplier, our healer. And, uh, and it's still hardened. Now, if you read verse uh, sec, uh, Deuteronomy 29, verse 4 says, But to this day the Lord has not given your heart to understand or eyes to see or ears to hear. This is not God's fault, by the way. It's very, it can be very misleading and confusing. What Moses is saying is that he saw in the three million Jews at that time, even though they have seen some of the greatest miracles humanity has ever seen, mankind has ever seen. However, they are not responding. Why? Their heart is heavy. Their heart is dark. Their hearts are dull. Their hearts are depraved because the Lord has not opened their hearts yet. Now all of them, some of them, God did not open it. This is very much like today. You know, when people are not responding to salvation of God, don't blame God because we are all that way. God in His sovereignty opened our help us. But the thing is, what I want to share with you, the great news is that, like commentary from ESV says, the heart is the organ of understanding and the will in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy focuses on the heart as a center of morality. Despite the emphasis on physical sight, what you see with the eyes, the heart must respond correctly to God. Like chapter 6, verse 5, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, with all your might, with all your heart and your soul and might. But Israel's hearts unlike, are unlikely to respond to God in the right way. You know, there's a lot of problems, like uh, 529, God said, Oh, that they had such a heart as this, to fear me and to keep all my commandments and may go well with them and their descendants forever. That's a frustration call from God. Oh, that they may have, that had such a heart as this always, to so fear me, they may go well with them and their des des descendants forever. You know, so the, <laughs> God is feeling frustrated. That's Deuteronomy 5, 29, and then Deuteronomy 8, 17. 
Beware lest you say in your heart, my power, my might has gotten me this wealth. Forgetting God and make yourself as the savior of yourself. This is a big problem. Is this is a primary number one root cause problem. And then there's another verse. Deuteronomy 9, 4. Do not say in your heart after the Lord your God has thrust them out. It is because of my righteousness that the Lord has brought me in to possess this land. Whereas it is because of the wickedness of these nations, the Lord is driving them out before you. Never, never said because of me, the Lord saved me. Never, ever said that this self-idolatry, worshiping me, worshiping us. That is fundamentally the biggest root problem. Self-sufficiency, self-ability versus a looking to God and acknowledging and giving honor to God where honor is due. So Israel needs God to correct its lack of right heart, ears, and, and eyes. Okay. Uh, for example, 36. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, that you may live. That's a key. God is going to circumcise the hearts of the people so that people will love the Lord. Without God circumcising our hearts, it will be just external obedience, external seeing the great things, but our lives are never changed. That's the fundamental problem of a society. We need a circumcision of the heart. Now, Jewish, Jewish people today continue to circumcise their flesh. That's from the day of Abraham. There's the Abrahamic covenant God says, circumcise every male offspring of yours, and including yourself. You shall be a people for me. But God today has gone into a new redemptive, redemptive historical period fulfilled by Jesus Christ. Now today, God in Christ who died and, and rose again for us would not need to circumcise our flesh but this time it's the spirit of god coming to us circumcise our hearts that's the only way we can obey god and love god with all our hearts and not to forget the wonderful the great works god has done i do want to give to you romans chapter 11 verse 8 very powerful as it is written god gave them a spirit of stupor eyes that would not see and ears that would not hear down to this very day See, that's a problem. God gave them a stupid, the spirit of stupor. They will never see anymore. But that God did not give it to them to punish them. God gave to them such in response to what they're already in such. You see, that's Romans chapter 11, verse 8. You know, and also in Isaiah 29, verse 10. For the Lord has poured out upon you a spirit of deep sleep. And has closed your eyes and covered your heads to explain why many of his Jewish contemporaries do not believe in Jesus. The renewal of the heart is a circumcision of the heart. What, what I shared just now, the circumcision of the heart is the renewal of the heart is going to come. In Romans chapter 11, verse 8, I, wrote, I read to you, but let me give you one more verse. Hebrews chapter 8, 8 to 13. For he finds fault with them when he says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah. Not like the covenant I made with their fathers on the day I took them out by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant. And so I show no concern for them, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant I will make, that I will make uh, with the house of Israel. Um, with the house of Israel um, and I'll put my spirit into their hearts that's the key the way God is going to circumcise our hearts is God to put his spirit into our hearts now God, God goes deep the previous time with Abraham is a knife that cut the foreskin of the body but now this time Jesus Christ has died and paid for our sins and therefore the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit is sent to us to, to use a spiritual knife to cut our hearts, 
cut away the rebellious hearts cut away the stubborn hearts cut away everything that is of not not right self-sufficiency so that we can respond to God that is how our hearts will respond that's the how that's how we're gonna make it the Lord bless you amen